I have a, a couple older men in my life who I learned an awful lot from. One was a social studies teacher, Mr. Bernice Brooks, who taught me a lot about how to relate to people, but most importantly, how to hold on to yourself. And I come from a country town of 800 people. A lot of people would think that's a village. And Mr. Brooks taught us a, the meaning of being proud of where you're from and not denying where you're from. He used a story coming back from World War II where guys were in an army and they were claimed that they were from some city. And all these soldiers, when they were um, being discharged, took the, the uh, train back home. And he noticed that when they passed certain cities, certain guys who said they were from those cities didn't get off the truck, didn't get off the train. But he was always very proud and he let people know that he, yes, he was a country boy and this is where he was from. And he thought that that really made a difference in terms, because it spoke to your sense of character. Because as he said, it's not important where you come from. What's most important is where you're heading. The other friend, the other well, older man who became a friend was the photographer at Tuskegee, Mr. P.H. Polk, who photographed George Washington Carver. And Polk had a way of, of and accepting people, and Mr. Brooks was the same way. That both of these men, never, even though Mr. Brooks was a teacher, he never put walls between him and people who had less education or less station in life than he. And Mr. Polk was the same way. They were very embracing of each other as people. And for a young person, it was a very important person, very important lesson to learn. And I practice it to this day because people are people. I believe that because of them, I believe that people are doing the best that they can. If they knew that they had skills that they could do things better, they would. But people do try to do the best they can. And Mr. Polk also taught me a great thing about photography. And once I went to see him because I had saved enough money and I had been attracted to photography magazines, and they would show me pictures. And they would say, well, this picture was made with this camera, with this lens, and uh, if you got, so, which led you to believe if you went and bought that lens, you were going to make the similar kind of picture. Well, I made the mistake of going by Mr. Polk's house on my way to proudly say I was going to purchase this new lens. And Mr. Polk says to me, he says, stop right there. And I says, what? What's going on? And he taught me a very important lesson. He said, there is no camera and no lens that can make a picture. Only your eye can make a picture. And not only was us a great lesson, uh, I said probably the greatest value of that lesson was confidence. Because years later as I grew up in life and I see uh, photographers with a lot of equipment, uh, I first I think, oh my God, that's, that's going to hurt their back. But then I understand why they do it because they are, get caught up into this, what if this happens, what if that happens. Well, what ifs can always happen. But if your mind is thinking uh, about how to solve problems creatively, you will always solve those problems. It's not the equipment that saves you. It's your thinking that saves you. When I taught photography, visual thought at NYU, I felt the same way. I wanted to see not the prints. I wanted to see the contact sheets. I wanted to see how the photographer, how the student mind was working, how they developed the thought and writing those thoughts of sentences and paragraphs in photography, those sentences or your images. So those two men had a real influence in my life and I'm blessed it, that we uh, intersected and that I grew a lot from knowing them.